Hello there, welcome to this video. This is the Bookkeeping Master on YouTube. In this free Sage tutorial video, I'm going to show you how to use the price list feature on the customer module and the price list feature on the supply module. This video is for Sage 50 Cloud, Sage 50 accounts, Sage Instant accounts. The process is going to be the same for each of those packages. It doesn't matter which version you have. So first things first, what is the price list feature? What's the whole purpose of it? If you have customers or a group of customers that you offer a discount to for certain products or a range of products, the price list feature will act as a database for those discounts, but also help to automate the discounts on the invoices. So as you invoice a customer, it will allocate that discount automatically. So perhaps you have, say, wholesale customers or trade customers is a better way of putting it. You might offer them a discount. You can add them to, say, the trade discount price list, and then that discount will be automatically applied. It's the same principle with the suppliers' price lists. If you have certain suppliers that you receive a discount from for certain products, you can create a price list for that. So that's the whole point of the price list feature. Generally, the customer price list is more used than the supplier price lists feature. In order to use the price lists, you need to be using the products and services module. So if you're not keeping track of stock, if you are not invoicing items that appear on this products and services feature. Another way of putting that is, you know, if you're not fully using products and services, then the price lists feature just will not work for you. You could use it as a database, but it won't be able to streamline and automate those discounts. So you need to be using products and services. For the customer's price lists, you also need to be invoicing through invoices and credits here. So you need to be doing those two things in order to use the customer price lists. Okay, so let's get started. So if we click on price lists here, we have a list of our price lists. If I want to view any of these price lists, I can simply go to edit. So I can highlight, say, trade price list A. I can edit that and I can see what's included in this price list. So we have all of our products here. This the description of those products, the sales price, the cost price, the list price. So this list price is the discounted price. And then with the profit margin to the right here. All of this information, apart from these two columns, comes from the products and services module. When we enter a discount on the price list, then these two last columns get the information from them, uh, get these figures from the information we enter. Let me demonstrate this. So if we create a new price list, so if I click on new, we'll call this example one. So example price list one. Okay, so that's the name of the price list and the description. We have no products showing. So let's add a product and let's do board 002. So with board 002, we need to set our price. Okay, so we can decrease the sales price by a certain percentage or a certain value, or just have a fixed price for this product. You can even increase prices. So you have certain products that you actually charge more for. You can mark up by a certain percentage um, or a certain value or percentage based on the sales price. So it's not just about discounts, it's also about increasing prices. So let's say for board two, we want to decrease by 10%. And then we have a rounding option down here. And you can have a look at that and play around with that. Okay, so this is usually £22 and it costs us £17. If I now add that, okay, so we have £22. The list price is now £19.80, which is 10% off, because that is what I entered in here as my list price calculation. If I wanted to 
decrease by a certain value. Let's say it's going to be five. That's probably too much. Let's say it's going to be two pounds off and click save. Then what's going to happen is the list price will come down by two pounds from the sales price. It's 20 pounds rather than 22 pounds. Obviously you would go through and add more products and create some sort of price list down in this, down in this bottom box here. This is where we add the customers or customer. We want this price list to be applied to. So if we have say ABS garages, oh, let's have a look through. Yeah, let's do ABS garages. If I click OK for ABS garages, this means that ABS garages, whenever I invoice them for board 002, they won't be charged the standard 22 pounds automatically by default they'll be charged the discounted price of 20 pounds so this was like a trade price list you could add all your trade customers in the box bottom box here by simply clicking add and going through and then whenever you invoice they'll get their their discounted rates automatically now to demonstrate this if i save this price list and close it so it's sales price 22 the list price for abs garages is 20 if I now go over to invoices and credits and click new invoice. So if I invoice this customer, so it's going to be ABS garages and we'll bring up for 002. You can see the price has come up as 20 pounds rather than the usual 22 pounds. So that's how it works. That's the basics of price lists when it comes to the customer module. The supplier module works almost identically. So if I click on price list, the only difference is you do a price list per supplier. You can't do a group of suppliers under one price list. So you'd go through one by one if needed and add a price list for each supplier. Now the reason why this is not used very often is generally you use one supplier for one product that's showing in here. If you're buying multiple of the same product from multiple suppliers, that's when the price list can come in handy because you could have different rates you're purchasing that product from depending on the supplier. Hopefully this all makes sense. If I go back to price list now, you can see my um, example price list one is showing it's got the last updated and the currency if I click on it on edit I can add more I can add more customers I can edit um, the price I can now change this to a percentage I can go down and remove ABS garages if I want or add more customers I think it's all quite self-explanatory but that is the basics of price lists hopefully this helped if you have any questions please use the comment section below. If you're new to my videos, head over, head over to my website, freebookkeepingaccounting.com. Click on free stuff, scroll down to Sage. There are hundreds of free videos and courses that will teach you all about Sage, all for free. There's no charge or registration needed whatsoever. Thank you so much for watching.